guys on day 20th. Wow. Do you hear that? That's my deep voice. I think I got a sore throat. I may be getting the flu or something. It must be from all the dust that I that I breathed over the last couple of days. <clears throat> I'm leaving camp. It is uh, almost eight o'clock. I am low on water right now because uh, the place is completely closed. But I have about three liters, so it should be fine. It is a short day, uh, about 18 kilometers. And the receptionist yesterday helped me book the place where I'm going today. It is the place where two nuns take care of uh, the wives and family of inmates from a maximum security prison right across the street. What? I was planning to have breakfast at Mickey D's, but they open at 9 a.m. So I guess uh, I have the leftovers from uh, yesterday's dinner and on we go. I found uh, the only uh, bakery opening town, so I got myself a croissant. I had an espresso in there and an orange juice. So many eyes on me, I dare not take out the camera. But I'm sitting here at the park, I'm gonna have my breakfast and then head out. And guess what? I also found an open bar on a Monday, two, two in a row. Things are changing. Uh, the barman was kind enough to give me uh, cold water, which I may have to drink right before the sun warms it up. And guess who I ran into this morning? Hi. <laughs> from, from well, I'm so glad I bumped into Peter and Kathleen once again and uh, we spoke for about half an hour so I'm actually leaving at 9 a.m. right now. Oh my god, I'm wearing my shirt backwards. <laughs> Alright, give me a second. There you go. Much better. Alright, so I was saying, leaving at 9 a.m. Today is a short day, according to Peter, it's 10 kilometers. I don't know about that, I mean, I checked uh, my GPS and uh, and uh, site and it was supposed to be about 18. So, at least I have it booked. If something uh, comes about, I'll see if I can keep going, but uh, I don't know. I don't know, even if it's a short day, I needed it. I cannot be another day ahead of schedule. So let's see what the day brings today. Let's go for it. Okay, so here's a situation that I find myself at a pickle. It does seem that the town where I'm supposed to stay is about 10 kilometers from here. That is an extremely short day. Tomorrow I don't have a place to stay. There's an albergue that you just have to show up. So I'm thinking about going there today and then it will be a 29 kilometer day. That is doable. The problem is that uh, today's Monday. I have a place already booked on Wednesday. So I just sent them an, an email asking them if they can move the reservation for tomorrow, Tuesday instead. If they say yes, then I'm gonna go ahead with this plan and do 29 kilometers today. If they say no, then I have no choice but to stay in prison. Check this out. More vineyards. I've been going up this uh, hill for, uh, for a little bit. It's been a little bit rough, but I had a bathroom break with an amazing view. And also check this out, the right. Mm. Mid-morning snack. Baroville. Sorry I haven't been uh, filming as much, but I've been going up and down over this 
rough terrain, not only steep, but the ground has been uh, gravel and uh, you know holes in it and uh, with the trolley it makes it uh, all the more difficult. It is, uh, what time is it already? It's 11 o'clock, I haven't heard back from uh, that uh, burger that I'm trying to change on Wednesday. So it looks like I'm gonna be staying at the, uh, the place next to the high security prison. I was also checking on the map and it would have made this day a 38 kilometer day, which you know, those days I wanna leave them far behind me. And if I'm gonna do a 38 kilometer day, I might as well start walking at 5 a.m. Not at almost nine like I did this morning. So, uh, you know, we take it as it comes on a day by day basis. First one of the day. So, guess what? The hotel reply and they said, yes, let's do it. Let's change it from Wednesday to Tuesday. So now <laughs> I have cornered myself into walking 38 kilometers today. Man, it's up and down. Well, it is almost uh, 12 o'clock and I'm approaching the town. I'm approaching the prison. I'm just gonna do a little quick break there and then I'm just gonna go for it. And now I don't have a place for tonight. I know that there's a, a room at a church, but I have to be there between, what is it, uh, four and six or six and eight. I have to check my, my notes. So let's try to make that my goal for the day. If not, I may have to camp. I corner myself into this. <laughs> On the final descent to town, through the woods, in the shade. I got double shade, I got the woods and I got the umbrella. Uh, must have all, my, all the eyes on me right now. That prison must have all the sensors tuned in. There's a queue and approaching. Needless to say, there's not gonna be any droning around here. Even I know that. I mean, you can't even fly over a prison in a video game. Try doing that in Grand Theft Auto V. You're gonna get five stars and everybody on you. Uh, I'm not surprised it wouldn't be the same here. Uh, I'm gonna try to take a little break. This, uh, this up and down over the hills have been a little bit tiring. I'm gonna get something to eat. Hopefully there's something open there. I think there's, a, there's even a bar and restaurant hotel uh, nearby. So if it's open, I'll hit that. Clairvaux. So finally made it, it is noon, I see a bar and it's open right across the street. You know, at a place like this, you learn that you either get busy living or you get busy dying. But hope is the greatest of things. Let's have some lunch. I had a beer and they refilled my uh, water bottle. No food, but I got to talk to uh, the locals. Some of them spoke a little bit of English. There's no reception here but we managed to, to communicate. It's funny because the entire city, the entire village is completely blurred in Google Maps. I guess they don't want you to see the, the layout of the, of the prison. It is 19 kilometers to uh, Chateau Villain. Chateau Villain? Chateau Villain. Thank you, Thank you Google. Uh, so it's not as bad as I thought. I should be there in four hours and there's like three places that I can stay. So, I am now officially two days ahead of schedule. <laughs> it's crazy. Oh, 
Oh man, what an amazing lunch did I just had. <laughs> the hotel here was open on a Monday and uh, things are turning, things are changing. Uh, they had a buffet, which I helped myself to, and I also had lasagna and then I had uh, an espresso. Wow. I also booked a room in uh, Orbs, not far from where I was supposed to stay today. Well, not where I was supposed to, where I was gonna head today. So the next couple of days are already booked. Great. And I only have 19 kilometers to go. It is uh, one o'clock. It's gonna take me about four hours to get there, which will put me around 5 p.m., right about the time when they let me check in. On we go. Just uh, left town and the Via Francigena side says, uh, go this way, go through the woods, go up and down the hills. And I say, not today, already did that. I'm gonna take the road this time. It's about the same distance, but it's more flat. Or at least uh, it's not gonna be as sharp the inclines. It is two o'clock, it is getting warm, I'm warmer by the minute. It is now, let's see, let's see, it is 91 degrees. Oh baby, and it's gonna get warmer. Longchamp sur Rojon. Made it to Maranville. Maranville. Yeah. Looks like I've walked already over 20 kilometers. Although I'm in the shade, it's getting pretty warm. I walked by a, by a river that looked tempting, except that, uh, that it stinks a little bit. <laughs> so I got the next best thing. That's cold. <laughs> Check this out, even the sunflowers are tired of the sun. It is hot, man. It has to be like in 95 degrees right now. But at least I'm seeing the clouds forming up. That means that uh, rain is in the horizon, at least for the next couple of days, which is probably gonna bring the temperature down at, at least 20 degrees. And uh, I'm down for that. Made it to uh, the place, 5.30. Uh, the lady speaks English, which is amazing. <laughs> uh, that's one less thing. Uh, I made it up to my room and immediately took a shower, which I have inside my room. And I also have, uh, I have a place to wash my hands, my teeth, and I'm washing my clothes right now. I saw a clothesline down there, so I'm gonna wash them and hang them out because I still have about four hours should be enough to to get them dry um, I was looking forward to having uh, bread and tuna for dinner but uh, my host uh, will not have it and she's gonna make me something by 7 30 so what more can I ask for let me uh, let me go hang those clothes right now look at this I have three beds to choose from I got baby bear 
Mama Bear and Papa Bear's bed. Which one should I use? Well guys, I just had the most amazing dinner with the couple that runs this place, Emmanuel and his wife. We talked about everything. And uh, we had such a great meal. I didn't bring the camera because I didn't want to spoil the, the evening. And at the end, they were kind to give me a tour of their working mill. And this place is just full of history. The mill is from the 12, 1200. They used to do all kinds of things here from uh, coal to, uh, to flowers. And now in the last 100 years, they've been doing uh, artificial flowers for fashion shows for Chanel and clients like that. And you go in there and just, it is beyond amazing. You have to check it out for yourself. If you ever in the region, please do not miss this spot because I was completely blown away. What else can I say except good night?